We all know that front-end inter interviews can be tough and uh, especially CSS1 can be really tricky. So in this tutorial, we are going to look at top 10 CSS interview questions and their answers. And I'm going to take you from easier ones to tough ones. And I'm also going to show you probability of that question coming to your interview. Welcome to Texas Tutorials. first question is what is box model or they can ask you this way what are the properties that are related to box model and to answer it you can say that uh, CSS box model is a box that wraps around every single element in HTML which includes uh, the content the padding inside and then the border and then the margin in order to show it give it some style so I can say some height let's say 100 pixel some border uh, 20 pixel and some margin 30 pixel background color let's say blue or something solid and uh, red and if i run this it would give me some border and in order to look at the border the box model if i inspect it i would see here the box model as you can see the content which is 100 pixel 100 by 100 and then i have a padding which is kind of outside and then the border and then the margin this is called by default every box is content box so they also ask you another property which is box sizing uh, and you can look at it so if i say box sizing here as you can see it's content box which means that the content which is a center part of it which is 100 by 100 the height and width which is inside and everything is else is outside but the border box is if i say box sizing let's say as you can say box uh, sizing is border box and run it it becomes quite smarter because now the border is part of the the box itself so the content shrinks so before it was like 100 pixel uh, height and width and the content was also 100 pixel but because the border is 20 pixel it now gives the border inside so the con the overall box is the same size it's just the, bo the the content shrinks to that uh, 60 by 60. the probability of this question coming to an interview is very high a lot of almost i would say 70 percent of the interview that i had um, this question came up one time I remember I just forgot to mention border I just said padding and margin and the content and the guy said you forgot one thing and I was like what did I forget and then I realized that I forgot border so you just memorize it I would say you would know it but you know sometimes it just your brain freeze when you have an interview so all right the second question is what is specificity the way to answer is if you have for 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 an element if you have two conflicting styles so let's say if you have one style that is changing the color um, uh, background color and you have a second style that is changing the background color of the same element then the browser has to decide which one to apply and it chooses based on the specificity and the specificity is nothing but set of rules that it um, it has so let's look at those rules and we're going to just discuss some basic rules there are so many rules but we're going to just look at some main rules so that we get most of the things covered so let's say if you have an element and it has some text in it and i can apply some style and i can say background color is green i would get a a box with green background color but what if I have a same div but different background color then which one your browser would choose would it be green or red so the first rule is if you have this kind of situation where this the same um, element tag and it has different conflicting styles then it would pick the last one 
here it's red so if I run this it would pick the red one so that's the first rule and to prove it if I obviously move this up and run it, it will become green because now green is the last second rule is let's say if I have a class here um, equal to name and here I'm just gonna say dot name so here the first it's just a common div and the second one is specific to the the name uh, class in this case it should pick div dot name because it's more specific than just a regular div means it applies to short, smaller sets of you know wherever you have class name and that's why it would pick this one it doesn't matter which one is up or down or last one in this case so if I move it up here it would still be green the third rule is let's say if I have um, ID call my ID here I can say my ID and run this ID wins over class even if I put ID up here it would still be ID because ID has a higher priority than class when it comes to specificity but what if I do this to a class now all the bats are off it would pick green because I said it's important and forcing this to pick this style probability of this question is um, I would say 40 percent all right the third question is how to align a block element inside another element basically aligning aligning center now there are many different ways to answer this question because you can use tables you can use uh, flexbox you can use css grids or you can use just a plain old css positions to center it and there are some other ways to do it but what they're asking is using the plain old CSS rather than using the flexbox or the other stuff. I have a tutorial on this whole topic which explains the flexbox and the other other methods. I'll provide a link here which so for that let's have um, an outer div and we have inner div. Okay so we're gonna try to center this inner div inside the outer div so the outer div and inner div is let's say and we can give some background color let's say this is yellow this is let's say green so right now the the inner div always stays at the left top corner uh, by default now what I want to do is this to be exactly center in the middle and to do it I can firstly what I have to do the outer div it has to have a position which is relative and the inner div has to have position which is absolute now what I have to do is I need this green one to be top 50% uh, and when I do that it should m move to the middle but not quite what it does it the the box itself moves 50% but it's top so if you look at it, the top is actually 50% of the right in the middle so this line is the center line but what I wanted to do is I want half of it to be up here and half down so I want to move itself 50% up but before that I would say left 50% when I do that, it would also move 50% to left. And so this uh, corner is the center of the, the yellow cube. So now I want this to, to move 50% of its size, this side, and 50% of its side on the top. So for that, I would use transform uh, translate. And I would say minus 50%, minus 50%. And now it will be in the center. 
And since I've used a percentage, which means that even if I change the size of the outer box, the inner box would still be centered. And the probability of this question coming to interview is about maybe 20% of so. All right, the next question is, uh, what is the difference between static, uh, absolute, relative, and fixed position in CSS? And this is a very important question, and it is important to know this, because if you're a CSS guy, and if you don't know this question, then it's really bad. So I think it's very important to know. All right, to explain this, I have these three elements. And by default, they are, they are all static. It goes by the nature of the flow, which means if the first element here, it will be stay there, and the second element will come after. In the natural order, that's a static really means. Now, if I change the second one, position relative, nothing would happen. Uh, but if I apply uh, some top, left, right, and bottom, let's say if I say top uh, 50 pixel or something like that, and run it, it would move 50% from this original position down. Top means it will have a 50 pixel top and the gap, right? Um, similarly, I can say bottom, and it would move 50% up from this original position without affecting the element one and three. As you can see, element one and three are exactly where they were. It just the, the element two is moving around using the top bottom. So, and also you can explain the use of this because this doesn't disturb its environment that much. Uh, compared to position absolute, which we just looked at for the centering the element. Now, if you look at, so the two, so the three actually moved up as if two doesn't exist. So like a two is an actually in a separate space in a way. Uh, so that disturbs the environment. And now I can actually move, and it's actually reference to its parent position. So if I just say top, zero means it would go up here which is its parent that the parent is the main container so that's the main difference and the fixed fix is almost like absolute but it's reference to the entire page not its parent so it will stay wherever it is right now so let's say if i have um three if i just replicate three many time and run it now I have one two three and the position is fixed so the two actually stays where it is and everything else is moving around it so you can use for like advertisement you know when you have a page advertisement which stays there even if you're scrolling up and down the rest of the page so that's position fixed and again if you want to understand it more I have a tutorial on it I'll provide a link here. A probability of this question is also very high. They may not ask you exactly the same question, but it's related to the position. Uh, you might get some question. The next question is, what is the difference between visi visibility hidden and display none? So only this element is hidden, but this other element is not hidden. So if I run it, as you can see, the, the, the top part is there, but it's not being displayed. That's why there is a gap here. But if I say display none, the gap is no longer there. That means the element doesn't exist inside the dome. So it doesn't hold its position. Visibility hidden, the element is in the dome, but it's not visible. And display none is element not inside the dome. So it's not even gonna render. Probability of this question is also very high. I would say maybe 60% or so. All right, so this tutorial is getting a little bit longer, so I'm gonna split into two tutorials. So the next five questions, um, I'll provide a link at the end of this tutorial so you can follow it. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you did, please uh, like, subscribe, and provide a constructive comment. Thank you.